Good morning, and welcome on the web. God is good all the time. And the people of God said, Amen. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, in it, which God prepared in advance for us. He knows everything before we even, we always like to try to think we know everything, but he knows exactly the way things are going to go. So that's, that's what we have to rely in, that we just got to rely that it's God's plan. Uh, we're going to move into announcements. Do we have any announcements this morning? Rhonda. Good morning. So good to see all of you. Yes, I got up a little early. Last weekend, I wanted to give you a little update. We had a luau. Were any of you there? Do any of you remember that dance? I won't make you get up and get it. We had a wonderful time at the luau last weekend, and I wanted to let you know that um, we are so appreciative of the love and support from this church because we made a little over a thousand dollars for the missions trip at the luau and more importantly um, I think we all had such a wonderful time I think that goes down in the memory books of a really good time here how about you guys did you have a good time all right I think we're gonna do a little bit more of that but um, I also wanted to just share with you, we had a little contest going on with our servers. For those of you that weren't here, all of our youth were the only servers that you had, and they were able to serve each one of you, and just maybe you were able to get to know them on a different level than what you really saw them at previously. And the two boys, um, Jacob and um, Zane, um, were our two winners and um, that was just kind of a, a little uh, contest behind the scenes but I wanted to let you know that it was more than that it was letting the kids serve you and um, it really goes to what their missions trip is all about and that is serving others and you don't have to go out far away or on a missions trip to serve others we can do that within our own church in different ways. And so I just wanted you to, sh to know that it doesn't matter of your age or your gender. Um, you know, sometimes it's stereotyped that, you know, women are the best waitresses. Well, guess what? The guys won. So, you know, it, it all comes down to what's in your heart and what you have to give. And that just comes out overflowing as you meet others and just let that mission go. Um, so I really wanted to thank you so much um, for joining us and just having a good time with the youth and all the love and support that you've been giving and have prayers and just everything that you do for the youth because it really is making a difference. And um, we also kicked off, I don't know if you saw, the flow is back, the flamingo. So um, for those of you that don't know about Flo, Flo comes up about this time of year and she gets lots of her friends and some of them fly into people's yards late at night, it typically happens, and you wake up and you see this beautiful pink array of Flo and her friends in your front yard. And it's just kind of a fun way to let the friends and family that you know that um, they love you and some people just really don't like Flo. And that's okay, because you can buy flow insurance. That means you don't have to have any of Flo and her friends in your yard. So if you're interested in the flocking, uh, we do have a table out here, and we'd love to talk to you about it. Thank you. Thanks, Rhonda. Any other announcements? Yes, Brian. Uh, the yellow sheets in your bulletin day just wanted to uh, kind of call your attention. Uh, and we do have a means for a church-wide meeting in the United Methodist Church. It's called a, a church conference or a charge conference. And uh, the charge conference is the administrative board meeting with the authority of, of, of a conference. And um, 
when that's expanded to every member uh, having a vote, it's called a church conference. And so uh, we have called, uh, asked the district superintendent, and a week from Tuesday, March 13th, we're having a church conference. Uh, the trustees and administrative council over the last few months have recommended that we sell the Christner uh, property. And uh, so through uh, some fact finding and searching and looking, uh, that is their recommendation. And so we're bringing that back uh, to a charge conference. That will be the motion that is presented at uh, the beginning of our regular scheduled administrative council meeting. So if you might be interested in that and what all has gone into that decision and uh, the hopes and plans uh, for that sale, uh, come on out uh, on Tuesday, March 13th, as we begin our regularly scheduled administrative council meeting with uh, a church conference. So we'd love to see you. Thank you. We have a new great granddaughter. She's a real whopper. She weighed five pounds. <laughs> five pounds. Congratulations. Any other We have this Saturday at 8:30 at Richard's restaurant is the men's devotional and breakfast. Uh, just make sure you come out and enjoy us. Uh, it's been a great time. I ain't been there in a while, so I don't think Merle has either. We'll both be there this week. So, uh, Any other announcements? If not, let's stand and greet each other with love.
You may be seated. Now we come to a uh, time of joys and prayer concerns. Do we have any joys and prayer concerns? Right back there. Praise the Lord. Praise God the is Lord. good. Yes, he is. Um, I had my last of my initial 12 treatments this week. So now in three weeks, I start my one every three weeks for a year. But God has been so, so good to me. I've been so blessed. And Judy wanted me to t tell you thank you for all your prayers. She's doing very, very well. She and Ed came out last night, and she's not in a lot of pain. Of course, she's not very mobile yet, but she's not in a lot of pain. Right. Let's all say hi to Steve and Marcia. Uh, hi, Steve and Marcia. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I can say that I, I watch her walk in and I watch all of you guys, every one of you when you see her, oh, I'm so glad she's here. You are definitely loved in this church, that is for sure. So, any others? Yes, we've got a blessing. Steve got a job at Honda and he's had quite a time. So he'll only be 15 miles of, from home and his family can survive. Cool. I'd just like to thank you and to praise God for um, being with us last Wednesday when we served at the community kitchen. We had a great crew of workers, just enough people, and just enough food. So can't ask for anything better than that. We served 107 people that day. Awesome. Any other joys or prayer concerns? Right there, Merle. I wonder if we could have a hands-on prayer for a girl. She's going to her surgery tomorrow. Could we do that? Any other joys and prayer concerns? If not, we'll turn it over to Pastor Greg. Carol and I so appreciate um, the faith, the support, and the care of the body of Christ. Um, and thank you for that. Um, she has been uh, receiving uh, notes and cards and prayers of support and, uh, and those that are uh, slipping down to be with her ahead of time. And it's um, just a great, great support. And we know that we and she are totally in God's hands. Uh, as we come to communion uh, this morning, we move the table down and out on communion Sundays, um, 
because the scripture talks about the communion being a place of invitation and that communion is a place where we gather around the table. Jesus said that um, heaven will be like a great banquet. And he said he will not eat of and, and drink of the vine until that time when we all gather once again around the table. And so we gather around the table uh, for communion in hope and expectation of that day when we will be reunited with Jesus. And so we prepare for that. Um, one way we don't repair, I know as we grew up, one of the things we tried, I think, to never do uh, with our kids was to punish them through saying, go to bed without your supper. Um, that was not uh, our means of discipline because we wanted the kids to know they were welcome around the table. No matter what they had done, no matter what they might confess during that meal time, uh, that was not a time to banish. Um, that was a time to uh, gather in support and care. And so as we gather around the table this morning, um, I'd like for you to pray. The scriptures say, uh, in Ephesians, the first chapter, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. Um, no matter where you are this morning, no matter what you have done, no matter if you have strayed, no matter if you have sinned overtly, no matter if you are in a faith crisis this morning of wondering about your relationship with God, um, he invites you to the table. Confess your need your weakness, your sin. Express your desire for him to meet you in this place. Let's pray. Oh God, as we come today to this time of communion, as we come to this day, as we look forward to heaven and eternity, as we look forward to that place with you and that place of, of great feast and banquet, we long for that time when all the barriers will be removed, all the sin will be gone, all the sickness and sorrow, all of the pain, all of the surgeries, all of the unrest, all of the tears, when everything that divides us will be removed and we can be wholly and completely reconciled unto you. When there will be no more wars or even rumors of wars, where there will be no more heartache or pain. As we gather this morning, we gather in light of the hope that is ours in Jesus Christ. We gather knowing that you have already defeated death, you've already defeated sin, you've already defeated all of our enemies and those things that divide us. 
you say even Satan is under your authority. But we realize, oh God, that even though the war has been won, we still fight these battles in this life. And each day, we need you. Please, Lord Jesus, come fill us once again with your grace. Come, Lord Jesus, and as your grace flows, may we allow that grace to flow from us to those who so desperately need your forgiveness and your love all around us. May we be messengers of the good news. May we be bearers of Christ. May we be ambassadors into a world that needs peace. May we be a witness to the grace we have received and the salvation that is ours in you, O oh God. So Father, may this simplistic message be ours today and this week as we gather around your table of grace. Continue to prepare us for this meal as we share in the Lord's Prayer and continue to invite us into that relationship with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now's the time for us to give back to the Lord and uh, also to make sure you fill out those papers and put them in the offering plate. But just give as you feel led.
The reading today comes from John 14, 1 through 7 in the NIV. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that was not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Heaven is a wonderful place filled with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face because heaven is a wonderful place. I want to be there. Heaven. When we think when we consider this wonderful place that Jesus invites his disciples to enter into in these latter hours before his crucifixion, he comforts them with these words, do not let your hearts be troubled. The thought, the hope, the reality of heaven in this earthly life that is filled with struggle, with pain, with sorrow, with sin, with disappointment. The thought of heaven is one of those realities that keeps us going, that helps put perspective Perspective on this life. We are troubled. We struggle. And yet Jesus tells those disciples just hours before the reality of what was going to happen in his own life, Jesus comforts them with the words, do not let your hearts be troubled. It's interesting that when Jesus talks about heaven, he talks about it in terms of his father's house. And that in his father's house, there are many rooms. The old King James Version would say many mansions. The word really indicates and means that it's like a, a, a mansion, that heaven is that place where there are many rooms inside of this wonderful abode, that place where God lives, and that there is a place for you. We often think of heaven as a place. We often think of it as a locale. In the Old Testament, heaven was uh, seen in, in more general terms that it was simply the place where God dwelt or lived. When we think about heaven, Jesus described it in terms of relationship. 
his emphasis was not on the location, but on the reality of who was a part of that heavenly existence. Yes, he said, there is a place. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's to be looked forward to. But it's a place in the presence of God in his house, and it's in the presence of Jesus. Heaven is a wonderful place. It is indeed filled with, with glory and grace. I want to see my Savior's face because heaven is that wonderful place. I want to be there. The apostles in the first century taught that the righteous would live in the presence of God. Yes, they knew God to be uh, all-present, uh, omnipresent in, in, in everything. And they called the central part of that presence heaven. God, that creator of, of heaven, he's not forced there, but he chooses to be there and to invite believers to be with him in that place. Heaven, a wonderful place. What makes it so wonderful? What is it about heaven? Well, heaven is a, a wonderful place because we are in the presence of Jesus for eternity. I go to prepare this place for you that where I am, you may be also. Any of you who have children that may not be living right near you, there's something extremely special when the kids come home. There's preparation. There's the, the cleaning of the house. There's the gathering of the food. There's the clearing of, of the schedule as, as much as possible. There's the invitation to come and the anticipation of, of what it will be like when we all get together. Heaven's described as that kind of a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Jesus says it's a day of rejoicing. It's a day of celebration. Heaven is that wonderful place he says, because we're going to gather in his father's house and he will be there. We come to faith through Jesus. He says, he alone is the way, the truth, and the life. Our relationship with God is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's the receiving of the gift that he has to offer, his relationship that is open to each and every one of us as he invites us into that relationship through faith, through belief that he is the Son of God, he is the Savior of the world. We receive Jesus by faith, we believe in heaven by faith. Jesus lived with his disciples literally for those three years. 
when he announced that he would no longer be with them, they were devastated. Jesus brought them comfort by saying, I'm going to, to go, yes, but I'm going to prepare a place for you and know that where I am going, you will also be. Heaven's a wonderful place because Jesus is there. Heaven's a wonderful place because of what's waiting for us there. Jesus says that as he's going, he is preparing, and he is preparing a feast in our presence. In Matthew 22, 2, he says that the kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepared a wedding banquet for his son. Heaven's a wonderful place because Jesus will be there, and he will be there preparing a feast, inviting us to join in that party, that celebration. often been asked, what are we going to do in heaven? Will it be boring? Jesus says, no, think of the most wonderful times you've had gathering with family and eating. Those are two of the, 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 the greatest joys we often have as a body of Christ, isn't it? We've been accused of being a, a, a church that loves carry-ins and loves to get together and have a good time and, and to enjoy each other's company. I think every church I've ever served, that's been the accusation. We love to get together and we love to eat. Jesus says, that's a picture of heaven. You'll get together with Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit and with each other. And there's a feast that is being prepared even in this very moment. Now, when we think of this life, we see heaven as a foreshadowing of that which is yet to come. We can't duplicate heaven on earth, but we can catch glimpses of what that might be. He said the Holy Spirit is with us when we gather together as a body of Christ. His presence is in this place. Yes, we will see Jesus face to face. The book of Revelation tells us that that will be an expectation and a desire, just like the disciples who lived with Jesus for those three years and they longed for that time when they would be together again. Heaven will be that place where we will see Jesus. We will see him face to face. Until then, we have to see Jesus through the Holy Spirit. We have to hear of Jesus through his word. We have to experience Jesus through his Holy Spirit. We have to see Jesus through his disciples, our brothers and sisters all around us. We catch glimpses of heaven here on earth. 
but Satan still reigns. Sin still runs rampant. Worldly authorities still have way too much power. And we long for the day when we will see Jesus face to face. Communion is a foreshadowing of the feast in which we will also gather. As I was looking at the, the idea of the Holy Communion being a feast, I read some pastor's reflections on what it means for her on Communion Sunday when she said, gluten and I are not friends. Eating things with gluten like wheat and barley and rye or some things that have come in contact with gluten gives me flu-like symptoms and a sharp pain in my stomach. Gluten is found in a lot of things, she said. Some of you expect and others have taught me that I need to, to check everything. Gluten is commonly used as a thickener to keep things from sticking to itself, as a preservative, or even to make lipstick shiny. She said, at first I thought that amount of gluten in a communion wafer wouldn't be enough to affect me, but I was wrong. Worrying about whether communion will make you sick is a struggle in a lot of ways. Feeling as though you are, are weighing temporal problems with spiritual gifts from God. I now have gluten-free communion wafers made of rice. And she talks as though there she is thankful for the altar guild who lovingly prepares our family meal of Holy Communion each week and make it possible for her to receive the meal as a family with a gluten-free wafer as well. Even in the most holy of holy meals, there are signs that that feast is imperfect. It's not all that it can be, will be, should be. There are barriers to enjoying the fullness of the sharing of what God intended as he said to us to gather around the table. Yes, we live in an imperfect world. Yes, Christ's presence, we don't see him face to face. Yes, the, the Holy Communion is not all that it will one day be when we gather around the table. It's representative of the presence of Christ and the feast of gathering around the table in celebration of our relationship with him and his provisions for us each and every day. The table reminds us that heaven is a wonderful place filled with Christ's glory and grace. The table reminds us that we are going to see our Savior's face because heaven indeed is a wonderful place. One of the teachings of Billy Graham was shared during the service by one of his kids. It was popular for him to say that someday you will read or hear that Billy Graham is dead. Don't you believe a word of it? I shall be more alive than I am now. I will have just changed my address. I will have gone into the 
presence of God. As we come to the table this morning, as we come to that time of remembrance of what this table represents, we come into the presence of God. We come experiencing his presence when he says to us, remember, I am present in this bread and in this juice. This, he says, is my body broken for you. He said to those disciples, this is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Communion reminds us that heaven is his presence. And we can catch a glimpse of it here and now. When we partake of the communion, we know that this feast is not all that it can be and will be. For he says, I won't be drinking myself of it until that day when I return and I will feast with you face to face, in person, once again. Communion is a glimpse of heaven, a glimpse of his presence, a glimpse of the life that he brings, a glimpse of the hope that we have in that relationship with him, and a longing for the day in which this meal will be transformed into the feast that will wholly sustain each and every day. I invite you to participate in his presence today. And I invite you to catch a glimpse of the feast that will be ours in heaven. As the ushers prepare to come forward, let us prepare. O oh, Holy Father, I thank you for the promise of heaven. I thank you for that promise that you gave your disciples that the greatest thing about it is it's your presence. And this holy feast this morning reminds us that you are with us always, even to the ends of the earth. Feed us, Lord Jesus, till we want no more. Thank you. We praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. The communion table in our United Methodist tradition is open to all who desire relationship with Jesus, who yearn for his presence in their life. So as you come to the table this morning, take a piece of bread, hold it, ponder it, consider it. When all have been served, I'll invite you to take and eat in remembrance. Likewise, with the cup, as you take and drink, remember the grace that has been poured out to you and the forgiveness of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Consider, ponder, and then together, collectively, we will take, we will drink, we will be thankful. Come to the table.
this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, and remember giving thanks. Christ's blood for the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God for his indescribable grace. Drink ye all of it in remembrance.
We practiced heaven today in the presence of Christ and the gathering around the table. Go in the hope of life eternal in Christ, longing for that day when we will see him face to face. Amen. Good job, man. Good job, Joyce.